in 2015, my wife and I moved to Austin. I was 20, uh, 31. I think that uh, in Kazakhstan, when people tr when men turn 30, they become a full man, not just a boy. <laughs> a tragic for me. It, that was a very tra tragic time for me. It was hard for me because I had to leave. I had to leave all my tools in Uskimnagorsk, my old city. All my screws and all the tools I need. Not that I used them often, but I really liked that that I had all these tools because I could fix something in my house. And when I moved to Astana, I'd, it was hard for me. My friend and I, we were we came to fix a door and we didn't even think about bringing our tools and there's a saw and it was just very it wasn't sharp and we couldn't fix that door because we had no tools if i had a tool i could have fixed that door better that's again more to the men in this room you have tools for other for two, you have tools for other, for different obstacles in your life, and different tools can fix different things. And women, they have different, maybe creams. They have hand cream, foot cream, face cream, and you're kind of prepared for life. And sometimes you don't even use these things, but it, it's reveal, it's it's nice to know that you have this. Later on, I will share why I shared these things with you. Let's re review what we had last week. So Paul, he is serving, uh, and he was serving so much that people wanted to beat him up. So the whole city came came up to beat him up, and he's standing, be, all beaten up, all these people around him. The soldiers had to evacuate him, so the soldiers saved his life. And he turns to the soldiers, and he says, "I, I have a word for these people that want to kill me. And if I was a soldier, I would say, hey, isn't." Isn't this the result of why you already told them something? And if I was Paul, I would say, Isn't this the result because of why I told them? But great, that Paul was in the situation. He's very brave, much braver than I am. And the soldier allows him to speak. So today is Acts 22. Сказал мне, брат. 
Асаву, разбери. Я тот сейчас увидел его. Он рассказал мне, Бог отцов наших предизбрал тебя, чтобы ты познал волю его, увидел праведника и услышал глаз из уст его. Потому что ты будешь ему свидетелем пред всеми людьми о том, что ты видел и слышал. Итак, что ты медлил? Встань, крестись, я мой, крести твои, и звав имя Господа Иисуса. Когда же я возвратился в Иерусалим и молился храме, пришел я выступление, и видел его, и он сказал мне, поспеши и выйди скорее из Иерусалима, потому что здесь не приму твоего свидетельства мне. Я сказал, Господи, им известно, что я верующий в тебя э, запечал в темнице и бил синагога. И когда проливала кровь Степана, свидетеля твоего, я там стоял, одобрял убеждение его и слег одежду, подевавшись его. И он сказал мне, иди, я посу тебя далеко к язычникам. До этого слова слушали его, а за им подняли крик, говоря, иди от земли такого, ибо ему не должно быть. А между тем, как они кричали, метали одежду и бросали пыль на воду, и сиротяне повелел вести его в крепость, и когда встречевать его, чтобы узнать, по какой причине так кричали против него. Но когда растянули его ремнями, Павел сказал стоящему сотни, «Разве вам позволено встречевать римского гражданина, да и суда?» Услышав это, сотник подошел и донес священачальнику, говоря, «Смотри, что ты хочешь сделать. Этот человек римский гражданин». Тогда священачальник, подойдя к нему, сказал, «Скажи мне, ты римский гражданин?» Он сказал, «Да». Священачальник отвечал, «Я за большие деньги приобрел этот гражданство». Павел же сказал, а я и родился в нем. Тогда тотчас отпустили, отступили от него, хотел пропитать его. А священачальник, узнав, что он римский гражданин, испугался, что связал его. На другой день, желая достоверно узнать, в чем обвиняют его иудеи, освободил его от оков и повелел собраться первосвященникам и всему Синедриону. И люди для Павла поставил его в середине. Знаете, я... So this is our chapter for today. And as I'm reading these stories about Paul, you can tell that he didn't forget about the people around him. And he really was worried that they didn't accept the gospel. In the previous chapter, we see that he does a law for the Jews so that the Jews could uh, accept him, so that he could reach them. And here, when he is beaten up and he turns to them and he wants to share, he has hope. He has hope that one more phrase and these people will change their minds. I read it in one book. There's a phrase that means that people have hope till the end. And sometimes God puts on a heart, you know, for some people to serve the youth. And for some people, God uh, puts on a heart to serve the children. And for some people, it's to serve the sick. So Paul has that in his heart. God puts something on his heart. And for him, he looks at these people and he's like, you're my family. Please listen to me. He tells them, you need to hear this gospel. You need to accept this gospel. And he, he has pain in his heart because they are not accepting it. And so he churns and he shares his testimony to everyone who's around. And there's in, in his testimony, everything is just so beautiful. First of all, he is... He is speaking their language, which is what is very nice for their soul. First, they're saying that he's a betrayer. But here he's showing that, hey, I can speak your language. And then he, say, he shows them how he was growing up. So as he's sharing, he's getting these points from them, kind of. <coughs> and he shares with them how he persecuted these people and so the Jews are liking what he's saying and God is and the 
and the Jews are giving him more points for the things that Paul is sharing in his testimony. And then Paul says, I'm going to go share with the Gentiles. And all the points that he received, they all fade away. Kill him, is what they say. Remember how Paul was very traditional? That those people, he was ready to kill those people that had a little bit of different thoughts than he did. And I'm sure that he would have reacted here the same way unless he met Jesus. He would probably want to kill everyone that's not like him. Here you, everyone kind of sees that the story has come to an end and they're ready to take him away. How do we usually try to figure out something? We tell a person, if we don't like the answer, we raise our voice, and then we frighten them, and then we use our strength. That's usually how, that's usually how it happens. But here, we see a different story. He meets a lot of people that lie to him all the time. And he knows that the people won't tell him the truth right away. And when Paul was ready, he calls and says, I'm a, I'm one of the Romans. So a Roman couldn't be put into jail. For a Roman to be put to jail, someone had to put a lot of effort into that. It, it was possible, but it was very difficult. But for that, you need to go through the judge. So there's no judge, and Paul is saying, hey, I'm, I'm a Roman. You are beating me up. The soldier were also kind of uh, frightened. Uh-oh, I'm a, I'm, I have a Roman. I can't really hear well when I hear a baby cry because of my own, because I want to cry just like that baby. So they come and they figure out that Paul is actually a Roman citizen, so they want to kind of take him to the other side because first of all he could be killed and we actually have to figure out what he's talking about. And we'll f find out what he means in the next chapter. So in this chapter, uh, we really want to break down this chapter in into sections. So first is the pa Paul's testimony, and then um, the Roman. So the first part is testimony. Testimony, our testimony is a very strong tool. Paul's testimony is a very strong tool. He showed them how he lived before, all his dreams, all his things that he um, was pursuing, the things that he loved, the things that he was passionate for. And then there's a moment where he meets Jesus. And then there is the change. He wasn't really able to share all the change that happened, but it's still present. We all understand, you know, back to the tools, that 
our testimony is a very strong tool. And this chapter that we see doesn't always work, but we must always, we must know how to share our testimony. In, may, sometimes in the shortest form possible because sometimes we don't get the opportunity to share in all the details. And in every testimony, there must be, there must be three points. Before the point you meet Jesus and after Jesus, how he changed you. I grew up in a Soviet family, but my family did not go go well through the through the Soviet times, and we lost everything, and I had no future. And because I had no future, but the future I had was just terrible. And I just lived uh, every day as my last day, and I was destroying my life. I was terrified to live to the adult years, so I wasn't even trying. And then I was invited to church, and I knew the, it was a secta, but I went there because they told me that there will be girls there. And when I passed the doors, I knew that a lot of things would be with this church because I felt like I was home. And since then, all my life was changed. What does it mean? I found hope in the future. God restored that hope for the future. He made me a human. And I'm not just saying that I have hope that I'm going to be in heaven. But he physically changed my life. And you know when we just think about the testimony. When we think about our story. We see the way God moves. And when someone tries to tell you. That there is no God. You see your life and you're like. How, how is this possible? My life. I tried to escape what I had before Jesus. I tried to stop drinking everything and using everything I was using, but I couldn't. But when I met Jesus, I, I had my hands down already. I already stopped fighting for it. But when I met him, one click and everything just changed. everything just became better. And we like when testimonies are just like Paul's killed and now he loves. Or like me, I destroyed my life and then I and then I be, I started investing in my life. People were terrified when I walked into um, into the into my neighborhood. But now people are like to see me. They're joyful t- when <laughs> when I walk into the room. People, are like, oh, Sasha! Everything changed. It, the changes in my life are so visible. But for example, my wife, she doesn't have this in her life like that. Her changes are much more invisible. She didn't do drugs and alcohol. She came to. T- So the, we have we have a question that comes up. For example, my testimony isn't so bright if I just share it to someone. But I believe that a testimony of anybody is a power is powerful, is a powerful tool, and is bright. But oftentimes, oftentimes we don't use it because we are focused on other things in our life. Oh, my life isn't very different. I was then okay, and now I'm okay too. But sometimes we think that God can uh, just change the alcoholics. But 
but in reality God changes lives of everyone even those people that didn't do drugs and alcohol before they met Jesus what is faith faith is your foundation for your life when you started to believe your foundation in life changes or you gain a foundation you were living without a foundation but now you have a foundation and then your foundation guides your steps your further on steps we can do the same things that we were doing before but now having a foundation it makes a whole difference we were living in such a such a calm place in this country but things have changed but when we believe that our God Almighty controls all then you look at the future with a different understanding. So the third point that you share in your testimony, that's very important to share. The, the way Jesus changed your life. Because the way you look at your future is different. Your actions change or the actions you don't take change. The second point that I would like to say is don't don't forget about your past. When Paul went back, Paul had some type of uh, he had a lots of he went through a lot and he had lots of experience in his life and these experience God used f later on for his glory Paul knew the law and he knew what people could do to him and what people couldn't do to him he said that I'm a Roman he, Roman citizen he knew the law and he used it you can't hey hey you can't touch me you can't do like that to me very important for us to understand to analyze your past and a lot of our past is full of pain but that pain becomes our energy for the future it gives us the power to serve now I have a heart for youth because of my broken youth now I want to serve youth it was painful for me to as I walk through painful youth youth years but of course if you're 
if you're 30 years old and you haven't worked anyone your 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 mom's favorite son then don't analyze then don't analyze your past <laughs> move forward next thing i would like us to take away from the sermon is when paul was speaking to the jews he was sure he wanted to believe that as if he would come to the jews that they would believe and change their lives it was a door that he wanted to walk through that he, and he wanted to serve them but he would he was knocking on the door. The door wasn't opening. We don't know why, but God decided that way that the door will open. But then Paul sees a different door. He sees a door and he walks through that door. And imagine what happens. The Roman Empire pays for Paul's mission trip and gives him security, feeds him. Yes, he was in a storm and he, he almost died, could have died. But he has security around him. But he has the security that he needs. He, He's sending letters, and no one then is uh, beating him up. It's a door that when we 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 constantly have to pray to see open doors in our lives. How can we serve? Who can we serve? How can we serve our non-believer? How can we change a situation at work? And you try one thing. And we have to pray and we have to ask God that he would show us ways to change the situation, where to walk, through which door to walk, that God would give us the tools we need. In my life, in the ministry I serve in, we always try to come up with new ways that we can reach the youth. Because some things that worked 20 years ago don't work well now. Twenty years ago, remember what happened then. So we try to think of new ways that what we can do now. It's like a old couch. We like this old couch because it's old, it's reliable, but it's not good for us because it's it stinks. It's not comfortable anymore. So some so pray that God would always open the doors that God would show where to go and how to walk and with what tool to walk with. And the last thing like I said our testimony is a great tool. It's a great tool and it sometimes works but it sometimes doesn't. Sometimes you just need to be stay silent with the person and that would be a greater testimony of God than if you were to speak to him. Think about uh, Job and his friends. And what and what the friends told Job. Pray and try to grow that you would have more tools, not just your testimony, but something else. 
something else and more and more tools. Recently, our church uh, began a service where you can serve with your hands so you could babysit for someone to fix, fix someone's car. For my wife's parents, it was a big testimony when they saw the way Christians around the country would help each other. We needed some medicine and we gave a call to someone in another city and just being able to access different help from all around. It was a testimony for them. When non-believers see the way the church is active in each other's life, it's a testimony for them. People don't understand that. Pray that God would open ways for you to serve. Maybe different ways to serve. New ways to serve. Don't limit yourself to only one way to share the gospel. But so people won't just think that we are able to just speak, 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 but that we are able to be there with them, support them. So from the beginning, So we need to know our testimony. We need to know how to share our testimony well. I would recommend you to write out your testimony. I've been preaching from 2003. I'm not the best preacher, but I have some experience. And then Pastor Alexei, with his experience, a larger experience, he still, he still writes his sermon down because he knows the importance of it. No, you can't just have it all in your head. You need practice. So come home, write down your s sermon, uh, your, write down your testimony. These three points of a sermon. And let's talk about our past again. My past is painful. A lot of things I want to forget about. The pain in my past. The betrayal in my past. But we walk through it. Not for nothing. It helped, helps us understand the sinful people we were. The more I think about my past, the less, the less, the more I understand uh unbelievers I don't say I'm an angel and you're not because I know my past use your past as a tool grow your tool set you'll be more efficient with them the more tools you have and the last point is Search for God's will. Search for God's will in your life. Paul was searching for God's will, and Paul could clearly see God's will when God was saying, go there, not there. That's very important for us. Ask for God's, for God to show you doors. This is all that I have for us today. I would ask us to close in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for today, for your word, that we get to read your word, that we get to see the way we can be more helpful to the people around us, how we can help change. We ask you to give us wisdom and bravery to go out to this world please help us be wise in it 
help us understand when we should speak and when we should stay silent. We pray and ask you for us to seek your uh, your will in our life. Help us understand what you want from us. And that we would be able to see doors that you open in front of us and that we wouldn't knock and knock on closed doors but that we would see the open doors that you allowed in our lives and that we would walk through them but please bless us in your name amen